So you have a point out on this line. Is this in you? Yeah, I use yours. Um, I actually need to go back and do work because uh, I seem to be the only person doing two jobs at once. Oh, yeah, today. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so Claire has to go early today, so I need to take over the helmet testing again. Yeah. yeah. And I also need to go to finance and check that they have the cash for me to go and give to people because they were silly and didn't. It's, it's a nightmare. seen it <laughs> <laughs> no I, this uh, this word is specifically for my sponsor because my speciality should be in the security so much security so when i they ask me where is the security here so i say that's it this is the security <laughs> hi hi thank you for coming Oh, uh, no, it's okay. I know. I say thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> I don't actually have a point of oh, mm -hmm. oh. uh, This is the remote okay. control that the. Uh, so. I. I should use, use okay. the mouse. I don't think the mouse has shown the screen very often. Problem. So currently, so this is just <coughs> um, okay. I'm just waiting for it to catch up. There oh, we go. Okay. So it's. I just want you to basically just check that um, every now and again, just check that it looks all right on the video. It will be a, a minute or so behind okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. saying but just if anyone's um, on the live chat can um, say like. Give me a text. Oh, okay. Someone else will give me a text. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got your phone? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the phone. 
I do vote for the girl in the Okay. No, it's uh, just I can move freely. I'm just using this to move the slide. So yeah. every time I should be turn back on and click on oh, okay. the That's the point. Yeah. This is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Can you move the keyboard, maybe, and then you can just press the bar, can't you? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for Lara for myself. And uh, uh, I, I was planned to speak about my work, but uh, when I see there is uh, more time to present, I added some slide to cover uh, more about the speaker recognition. So it is mixing between my work and some review about speaker recognition. So first of all. My title for my thesis is Robot Speaker Recognition in the Presence of Non-Trivial Environmental Noise. I speaking about speaker recognition in general and speaking uh, about my work uh, in this presentation. So, first of all, let's see what is the speaker recognition and then speaking about the field that using in the speaker recognition field and the main challenges of the speaker recognition which are focusing on the environmental noise then I speaking about the structure of the speaker recognition and uh, the most commonly used systems that using in the speaker recognition with there are two systems we are the bit one here and then I am moving to speaking on training on the fly which is my work and finally the experiment setup and the result and finish with the, our conclusion and future works. So, first point, what is the speaker recognition? There are many kinds of biometrics, just like thumbprint, IRS, and uh, face recognition. And speaker recognition classified one of these biometrics. So, what is the uh, speaker recognition? It's defined as the process of recognizing a person depending on the characteristics that include in his or her voice. So what makes this kind of uh, biometric is different from other that using hybrid biometric because it depend on the physical characteristic which is included in your vocal system and how the way you are talking. So first it depends on your vocal cord, vocal tract, and in addition, it depends on how the way you are talking. So you are un speaking under stress, you are normal, you are whispering, or whatever. So 
we speaking we uh, we speaking about different kind of bio biometrics. So what make voice biometric or speaker recognition is different from other kind of biometric. First, it's easy to capture sample from individual compared with the other kind of biometric. For example, some person he cannot uh, accept to give uh, a fingerprint from the thumb or iris, but it is easy to take a voice sample from them. And it is most econ economical compared with the other kind of biometric. For example, uh, in iris, we need special devices while in the voice biometrics uh, is we can using just microphone and PC and that's it. It is most acceptable for individual as I said before is most of the individual accept to give their voice but maybe deny to give another thing just like uh, a fingerprint or uh, or uh, iris print or another thing and it is also uh, more flexible to use than other kind of biometrics. This is uh, a small introduction for speaker recognition. Now I am speaking about the main field or main branches of speaker recognition. There are a many type of speaker recognition, but the general type is two, which is speaker verification, which is to verify if this person is authentic person to access the system or not. So in this case, it the question is, is this the voice belong to the person or not? So even this person is the authentic person or not? So that's the most commonly used uh, type of the speaker recognition, which is called spe uh, speaker verification, which we are focusing in our work. The second type, which is called speaker identifi uh, identification, which uh, focusing on def define the identity of the person, which is this person, okay? So, uh, this type of, of uh, speaker recognition, there is two types, which is the closed set speaker identification. In this case, if this person is not included in the system, so we cannot find any output for this. The other kind is open set speaker recognition, which represents combination between speaker verification and the closed set speaker identification. In this case, he make identification and verification at the same time. For example, if this person tried to access the system and he's not verified, so he, he told this is not verified to access the system. But if it is verified, he tried to identify this person in addition to make a verification for it. The other classification for speaker recognition is three main types depending on the text. First thing is text independent, which is the text are used in the robot, uh, uh, robot uh, sorry, a normal phase and in the recognition phase is the same text. So this uh, commonly used the speaker verification and the target speaker as speak specific words or sentence to recognize his voice. This is more vulnerable for uh, attacking because if you are uh, bef uh, re uh, know what you say before, maybe this uh, uh, have a less security. The next next one is text prompted, which is represent a remedy for this. So also it is using in the speaker recognition, and in this case the system prompted the user to speak a practical phrase at the time of the recognition. So if someone try to record a voice for someone, so in this case he cannot know what the text should he tell in the recogni uh, recognition time. The last type is text independent, which is more flexible because it's depend, uh, not depend on what we say, it's depend on the characteristics of the voice itself, not what 
include in their voice. So whatever, if you are safe, that's okay. Now I am speaking about the main challenges of the speaker recognition. In general, the speaker recognition challenges can be classified in the two types, intra-speaker variation or ta time-lapse effect, and the second one is speaker independence or channel mismatch. This is depend on the person itself, while this is depend on the environment. For example, the, you know that the, the, the voice of the any person is changing by when he uh, uh, become older. So the aging is one of the, of the challenging in this case. And when he infected with the illness or cold, that the voice is changing and when you're speaking under stress or whispering this is changing in the uh, type of, of speaking this is depend on the person the second type which is depend on the difference between the enrollment model and between the speaker who are provided under the recognition process there's a many factor for this, for example, environmental noise, reverberation and echo, and changing of the hand tip between the enrollment and recognition phase. In our work, we are uh, uh, focusing mainly on the environmental noise, which is because it is represent the main challenge for the speaker recognition. Now, why environmental noise represent the main challenge for speaker recognition? When make a recognition process, uh, we we should be take an, an account. We cannot provide a clean environment when make this recognition. So this voice sample is vulnerable for any type of different environmental noise. For example, this speaker try to make verification, but there is a different type of noise around it. So when he make a recognition. Even he make a recognition well, I mean, which is authority person, maybe he is trusted or not, the system is not uh, know this person. Now I am speaking about our aim and objective of our work, which is can be classified in the two different aspects, which is investigation and development. So. First, the aim of the work is to develop a robust text independent speaker recognition system for the real world application and the present on the environmental noise, especially in the absence of any information of the type of the noise. For this, we're using this investigation, which is classified as a three aspect. First one is a pre-processing, which deals with the input signal to clean it before uh, using in the recognition. The other, the other aspect is feature stage, which using different kind of feature for uh, uh, and find which one is most robust to the noise to in the recognition. And second model is focusing on the modeling system, which is provide a noise training model instead of the clean model. And we then we are moving go for our development, which is the training on the fly for the ro robust speaker recognition, which focusing on the main uh, on the three uh, different process. First, the signal to noise ratio estimation, and noise identity detection, and finally make a mixing model or adaptive model is more close to the input <coughs> signal. And I uh, explain in the detail about this uh, process. Before I starting about our processing, I get some uh, introduction about the general structure of the speaker recognition. As is seen here, the block diagram, the speaker recognition can be, in the structure of the speaker recognition can be classified into and and to two phases. The training phases, which is responsible to provide a, a reference model for each enrolled speaker. 
first, we can see that onboard signal are making feature extraction. In this case, we are using novel frequency capture coefficient and gamma tone capture coefficient. Then creating a speaker module. At the same time, we make a recognition. We make extraction, the same thing we did it here. And then make a matching between the model for specific speaker and between the input signal for this another speaker to get a threshold and make decision if this a target speaker or the imposter. So in general, uh, this is in general the point is feature extraction, training extraction features to generate a DM a Gaussian mixture model reference, scoring and decision making and Finally, we make evaluation for our system, which I explained later. This is one example of the speaker recognition system, which is called Gaussian mixture model, the universal backdrop model, is shortly called GMM, UBM, sorry, I, I like it wrong, should, should be UBM. And uh, as I explained before, there's two phases, one for recognition, one for enrollment. And here, the, in the training model or enrollment model, what uh, the signals are passing through the feature enrollment, which is feature extraction. After that, we, make, we create a model for this speak, speaker. In the universal background model, instead of creating uh, a model from the scratch, we just adapted a model already created to the universal back universal backdrop model which here is there's just like a, a huge pool of models so every speaker that adapted the model from here and created a uh, dependent model for this speaker then providing for scoring and recognition later now i am speaking about our proposal system as we've seen here, this is the same system with some changing. What we, ha we, what we have here. First, we, if, we, uh, if you suppose we have a, a noisy signal, so we try to provide adapted model that is not, it's become noisy model, just like the input signal, depending on the two factor, signal to noise ratio and the identity of noise which is intimated with the input signal. So, for input signal, we first make a signal to noise threshold estimate, estimator. According to this, we uh, specify if this signal is a clean or noise. For example, if specify that signal is a clean, so the system is passing through the normal process we are explaining before I'm making a normal pro, uh, normal <coughs> uh, recognition while the sig signal is based on the specific threshold in this case we try to find the noise that embedded with this signal then using the signal to noise ratio and noise identity to mixing between the speech and the noise for the speaker to create an adaptive model which become more closely to the input signal. And then we can feel this degradation that happened when the uh, environmental noise are affected on the performance of the system. Now I speak uh, speaking about how we can estimate signal to noise ratio and how to uh, estimate the noise identity detection. First, we're using uh, as, uh, the envelope time, the time time envelope to estimate the signal to noise ratio. We're using the Hilbert transform and uh, sorry, uh, the Hilbert uh, transform to, uh, and the low pass filter to extract the envelope for each signal. And according to this, uh, according to this, if the signal is the clean, that we can see that the envelope is become close to the zero. While when it's the noise increase, 
and the signal that can be off the shifted up uh, far from the x-axis. According to this, we can specify our threshold, which is here, the red line, to specify the border of the noise and border of the speech. According to this, we can specify if this sample is belong to the noise or belong to the speech. And according to our uh, signal to noise ratio, we can estimate it the uh, signal to noise ratio in the decibel. This is before for signal to noise ratio. Now I am speaking about noise identi identity detection. How to estimate the noise itself, not the signal to noise ratio. For this, the on-post signal are passing th uh, through the third octave band, which is try to uh, find a, a different band between one and n, then making envelope extraction as explained before using helper transform and low, low pass per step. Then each envelope, we can find in the, the threshold that separated from the noise and, uh, and the speech. According to this threshold, we can estimate the noise threshold for each one. Well, after we estimate the noise for each one, we can find the power spectrum for each band, and then finally using this band to passing a white noise, which have a uh, fixed power spectrum density uh, through this filter to generate an emulated input noise, which become close to the original noise that complemented with the input signal. This is uh, a figure for the uh, 26 uh, 25 band, which is after we passing the signal. And we see here every band with the, uh, with the, uh, the output of the signal. Then we here we can find, uh, we can see, sorry, uh, every envelope for each band. And the threshold, which is represent the red line here, So this is represent a threshold between the noise and the speech. After that, this is represent the power spectrum for each band, and we see here the red uh, the red line is uh, represent the original noise signal, wh uh, while the blue one is represent the reference noise or estimated one. And we can see how much it's close. Then finally, when we are passing the white noise, will we shaping to take the, the shape of the original noise, and then using this noise to uh, mixing with the reference speech to generate an adaptive model. This is called uh, noise identity detection. The other type we using. Uh, speech cleaning algorithm or speech enhancement al uh, algorithm to extract the noise <coughs> from the speech instead of cleaning the speech. So what we have here, this is another technique, which is I call noise extraction. So here we're using any kind of uh, speech enhancement uh, algorithm to clean the speech from the noise. Then we're using the secret for Fourier transform to change this from the time domain to the frequency domain. At the same time, the original signal, the noisy signal, we, uh, we're using also to transfer it to, spectra, uh, to the spectrum domain, then making a spectral subtraction to subtract the noisy signal from the filtered signal to get the noise. And after that, we're using inverse uh, Fourier transform to provide uh, an extracted noisy signal, uh, noise signal. This is represent the original noisy signal. Uh, this is represent the, the time domain for the clean signal. And this is represent for extracted noise from the noisy signal. 
So first, we I speaking about how to estimate signal to noise ratio, how to discover the noise embedded noise in the signal. Then we go to the final procedure, which is speaking about how to provide an adaptive model for our system. So we're using the speech signal we already have from our references, and the noise signal we already using, and follow this block diagram to provide our mixing noisy signal. Then using this signal to passing through the creative, uh, creating a model using the Gaussian mixture model to provide an adaptive model which is close to the noisy recognition signal. Now I am speaking about our experiment. For our experiment, we're using two types of data set. One of its most commonly used in the speaker recognition which is called PMIT data set. The other one is, I called it self Sanford University and Accurate Chamber, which is, which is a speech sample collected in Accurate Chamber in University of Sanford. And the purpose we're using this data to deal with the noise uh, and speech separately from another environment. So this is represent a uh, laboratory sample. This is represent an, uh, a real world uh, samples. For the noise samples, I'm using four uh, five types of samples, which is bubble, bubble speech noise, which is uh, bubble collected in the cafeteria, cafeteria uh, of the university, mm -hmm. and moving car, and in, uh, the noise that collected inside the train, and finally the street and white noise. For providing a noisy sample to uh, to pr uh, to discover, uh, sorry, to test our uh, system, we're using the same procedure I explained before to provide a noisy signal and the different signal to noise ratio between 20, 15, 10, 5, and 0 dB. And this is one sample of speech sample are complemented with the different signal to noise ratio. This is the clean one con uh, collected without any kind of noise. And this is mixing with the 20 dB noise. And the last one is with the 0 dB. And you can hear. OK. This is contaminated with the 20 dB, with the bubble noise. And this is zero dB, which is the level of the noise, and the level of the speaker is the same thing. You can barely hear the speaker. For our experiment, we're using, as I explained before, the Gaussian mixture model to create a, a reference model. And uh, we're using lambda frequency capture coefficient as uh, features. For evaluation, we're using to that type of the data set, PMIT and Stanford University. And each one, we take 60 speakers, 30 male and 30 female. And for evaluation our system, we using two metrics that are commonly used in the speaker recognition, which is called error equal rate and detection error trade-off. Before I moving to our uh, result, I'm speaking about uh, briefly about those metrics. In general, sorry, uh, first I speak about the middle frequency capture coefficient, uh, how to extract the feature. First, that the input signal are passing through pre imprecising and then making a framing and windowing for signal using humming window. After that, using the degree Fourier transform, then mill scale filter and log the the result to finally make the secrete cosine transform to get middle frequency capture coefficient uh, features. And this is a uh, figure represent the middle filter band, as we see here. Now I am speaking about how to, uh, to evaluate 
your system, your proposed system, how to evaluate it. As I say before, it is there's two type of metric I using. There's many type of metrics, but I here using two type, error equal rate and pitching error trade-off. First of all, in speaker verification and in general, there is two type of errors. First error, if this person is authentic person, so it's, it's make it verified for this person, that's okay, no problem. But if this is authentic person and there is no verified for this, so we go to the false rejection rate or as we say false alarm. The other type is the one unauthentic speaker have take a verify, which is called a false acceptance. That's also another error. So in this case, the error equal right is represent the balance between the false exception right of false uh, rejection right. So as soon as the error equal right is in de decreased, that that uh, the system is uh, work properly. The first, uh, the same thing for the detection error right off, which is using uh, also by uh, proposed by NISSB to pre uh, present uh, to what extent the system work properly. As we seen here, the red uh, the red line and green line represent uh, the performance of the different systems, and here we can see the false alarm and misprobability uh, is represent the the to what extent this system work. So depend on these two metrics we evaluate our works. First of thing, this is uh, line graphs represent our system compared with the clean uh, the additional system are using the clean models. As we see here, the bold one is represent the normal system, while the dash red one represent our proposal system. And we seen here for uh, most majority of the type of the noise, we're using Salford University uh, chamber data set. That's a, a very a significant improvement mm -hmm. for uh, for type of the noise. Just in case, uh, just in case of the train noise, which is have a very slight improvement. Uh, I forget to say something. I hear uh, speaking about the main technique, which is depend on the emulated noising uh, estimation. Again, this is the detection error trade-off. The blue, bold blue line represents the proposal system, and the dash one is represent the normal system. As we can see, the, we have an improvement in both false positive rate and false negative rate if you compare with the normal one for uh, bubble and car and street and white noise. While in the train one have the same thing, which is failed in this case because it is have many components of the noise in the in this case of of train of of train noise. Sorry. Now the same thing for PMIT data set, and we see have also very slight improvement in the bubble noise and the car. Uh, uh, sorry, the car will have very significant improvement on uh, street. While in train, also there is a fail with this make, uh, with improvement. While in the noise, very good uh, improvement compared with the, with the clean one. This is, uh, this is the detection error trade off. And again, we can see the improvement in the false positive rate while the false negative rate have the same thing uh, in uh, bubble and car and street and white while in uh, train there is uh, some of improvement here while it is uh, close very close to here i forget to sum this in, in the 15 dp in signal to noise ratio now i am come to the next uh, next technique which is using noise extraction based on the speech enhancement uh, algorithm and we see here three 
three uh, line graphs. The first one is the general uh, the traditional system. The second one, this is what I explained before. And the third one, which is dash dot, is to represent the adaptive system number two. It's depend on the noise extraction. And we can see here that there's a very insignificant improvement if you compare with the first uh, proposal system and with the uh, traditional system for three types of noises, including the tra train noise, and especially in the low signal to noise ratio between N and phi. Since the noise are using to create this model is close enough to the input signal, we are us here we're using the same si uh, noise uh, that contaminated with the input signal. Also, on the detection error trade off, we can see that bubble noise have very significant in, uh, improvement in the 5 dB compared with the uh, proposal system number one and the traditional system, and also in the street one. While in the train, there is very slightly improvement. In the TMIT, we can see the same thing for uh, second one compared with the uh, two uh, other systems and we have very, sig uh, very significant improvement and the train here is have improvement uh, very slightly improvement in the uh, high signal to noise ratio between 20 and 10 while in the 5 and 0 there is very good uh, improvement Street and, and, and the other hand, on the other hand, have also very good uh, improvement in the performance. And again, we can see the bubble and uh, street noise have very Im improvement using noise extraction and the training on the fly. And uh, uh, for the train uh, inside the train, there is very slight uh, improvement. While in the post-negative train, there is a good improvement. Finally, I am go to the discussion and conclusion. We have proposed a new approach performing on the speaker recognition in the noisy environment. Uh, this, uh, this system is dependent on estimated the signal to noise ratio and noise identity or noise profile to create an adaptive noisy model which is close to the our uh, to the our input signal or to the verification signal. Uh, the approach shows the significant improvement when compared with the baseline with the, uh, uh, system, especially in the stationary noise. And uh, for non-stationary noise, the proposed method show promising improvement. And we, if you improve the estimation of the uh, power spectrum of the noise, we can get more good, uh, more improvement in the system. And as we see that training on the fly based on the noise extraction techniques show very significant improvement over the base emulated noise. So for a future work, we are uh, planning to apply this system on the other type of proposal we, uh, we uh, speaking as I am uh, applied this on the Gaussian mixture model. Now I plan to uh, working on the I vector baseline, which is another technique in the speaker recognition. We using here uh, um, already prepared uh, noisy signal because we need to control the signal to noise ratio. But now we can uh, apply on the real life. And uh, finally, uh, uh, improve the no uh, uh, profile noise, as I said before, to improve the system. That's what I have. If you have any question, I'm glad to answer. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I am working on the publishing on the public domain. Uh, it is, uh, I just uh, have a final touch on, on this, so it is very unique, which is, uh, I think, uh, it is approximately uh, 110 participants until now. 
And uh, one of the thing I need to speak about it is uh, uh, what what make it a unique uh, from other database. It's uh, included in uh, each sample uh, recorded in the English languages and in the native of the speaker. So if you someone needed to use him for for example for language recognition it also can use it and if it's using for speech recognition it also can use it. You asked uh, thinking of uh, comparing your definition model uh, recognition with the iDecta recognition system. Yeah. And so what are the pros and cons of this whole process and what do you expect to get from the iDecta that you didn't get from the recognition model? Oh, uh, uh, for for I uh, for I vector, it's uh, still under development and it's more complicated. What I uh, here I picked the Gaussian mixture model, universal background model, because it's more vulnerable for the no environmental noise. Mm -hmm. So I need to check first on this one if it is um, if, uh, I get improvement or or not. Then I need to move to I vector. I vector is more robust for the noise, and without using our our technique. That so that's true for all noises, basically? Sorry? Is that true for all noises? Being that the I vector uh, is more robust or is that special? No, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is not for specific, it's uh, more for channel mismatch. It's more robust for channel mismatch, for including the noise. Mm -hmm. So uh, the I vector, uh, but uh, why, I, why I don't pick I vector here? Because it is until I make this work, it's under development, and every day is another proposal. And finally, before I uh, make uh, my viper, I discover something about using, uh, replacing something in the I vector with the deep learning, deep neural network. So <laughs> I just waiting to find some of uh, good uh, fair form for I vector to to, uh, to apply it on this system. But in general, uh, uh, using Gaussian mixture model is more flexible with, with our model and more easier because I vector is more complicated. Yeah, I'm really interested in what you're doing because uh, my interest is not in speech, but I'm looking at wind turbine noise. And when you look, when you're measuring wind turbine noise at the residents' uh, mm. houses, then actually the wind turbine noise is typically of a similar noise level mm. as the surrounding background noise and you get all sorts of background noises very much with similar spectral um, characteristics. Mm. So uh, a system that at really low pitch noise ratios uh, improves <coughs> the, the actual recognition. Yeah, it's actually it's my idea is depend on it is easy to provide the continuated model instead of the cleaning. Always, we when <laughs> if you, for example, use the water, it's who is it to contaminate water or to filter water? So <laughs> it's the same thing. So instead of okay, I instead of I cleaning this thing, I can provide something more close uh, for the input contaminated signal. Okay. Yes. So, uh, sorry, can you uh, repeat your uh, question again? So, in uh, bank account, if you speak about speech, uh, speech reco uh, speaker recognition, or speech recognition, because it is completely different. Speaker, right. speaker recognition. Okay. Uh, this, uh, okay. Uh, if you I return back for some result. If you're speaking about the environmental noise, for example, uh, there is a threshold for exception. For for the normal one, we can see that it's far, far away from uh, 
from accurate system while we get very good improvement here especially in the post uh, positive rate which is which is the affected uh, focusing on it due to, uh, the authorized speaker is not authorized according to the environmental noise so according to this improvement it's very very good improvement especially in the uh, in the low signal to noise ratio if it, if that's the what to Uh, that's the that's the point. That's the point. Uh, I I I using here it is, uh, uh, I using in the on uh, on the artificial uh, artificial noisy uh, voice which controls the signal to noise ratio. So now I working on apply it on on the real world noise. And by the way, uh, uh, I have demonstration to explain. Uh, I already uploaded on the YouTube that explain how this uh, finding all the fly works uh, we, if you have a time you can I, I can show you one more thing for the bank account sometimes uh, sometimes uh, for first time is you are not recognize your voice okay yeah. that's the point uh if you using the normal one okay maybe he told uh, the uh, the bank account told me uh, speak again please to return back so maybe in the general one you try seven times to make a recognize for your voice while in this case maybe okay i i don't say it's from the first time maybe it is from the second or third time he can recognize it so, whether you are repeating seven times, or are you, when you are repeating just three times. Okay. Oh, so within your, um, when you showed the kind of noise identification model, you had a, like a speech enhancement block? Yeah. Which you then used to, to get an estimate of the noise. I was just wondering in those, in those traditional systems that, that, you, that you're comparing against, does that have any kind of speech enhancement at the front end? And does it make any effort to, to kind of attenuate the noise? Uh, you mean you mean in uh, using to speech enhancement or using to noise expression? So Why well, I, I using I use uh, actually in this work I using the speech enhancement to extract the noise, and at the same time one of the my work in my thesis is uh, to what extent that speech enhancement can improve the the. Uh, uh, the performance of the speaker recognition. For this point, uh, I did not get good performance okay, for so this you, point. So if, so if you would put the, the speech enhancement like at the beginning of the, the process, yeah, that, that's you a, don't, you yeah, don't I, I, I don't get a uh, good uh, thing. I using seven type of uh, uh, speech enhancement algorithm. One of them is winner filtering, uh, MTK, uh, MK mask, and uh, uh, subspace, which is subspace is more better than but still m very limited improvement so my idea here instead of i uh, using this to clean the speech i use it to extract the noise yeah. that's so maybe it's working on the on the noise is better than working on the speech Okay. Uh, yeah, you you mean uh, using the stationary noise directly? Yeah. But uh, okay, in the stationary noise, uh, still we have different kind of the stationary noise. Uh, we don't speak only on the white noise. I I using here a white noise, but. but you identify it in the. In the yeah. Okay. So why then do you have to have to estimate, estimate it? the profile rather than just copy it? Yeah. Uh, 
It's a, a good question, actually, but uh, 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 even uh, maybe it depends on the definition of this. Uh, how to specify this is stationary noise or this is not, because there is also something o uh, called semi-stationary or uh, quasi-stationary. -sta so this is point. Maybe okay. We don't have. Uh, as I say before, uh, here we don't have any absent information, uh, any information about <coughs> what is the complemented with the speech signal. So we, I deal with this signal as uh, an unknown complemented noise. It is stationary or not. So I, I take it in general. So in general, the bad cases is it is non-stationary noise. So that's I deal it just like it is. I have no any information about this. What is the included? Uh, what is the noise uh, embedded with the signal? This is also maybe the useful thing we've been doing because you had tons of noise samples for white noise and all that was not affected, of course, because we don't know the white noise. So there will always be some subtle effect on the noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh,